Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. I think about the last time I did something for the community. They practice and shooting me. I guess I did something wrong. Something that can't be settled over a game of pong. But these niggas came bearing arms. I'm still writing songs. Never wanna leave my home. Stay in the sheets, sucking tits until it's sunny morning. Excuse me, grand rising, stack piling. She got her own money. We just high fiving sexual organs. Cause that's what gods and goddesses do. Let me know if that's an issue. I'm a firm believer in residual income. I don't know if women still use. Use Lancome, but my product's way fucking better. Shoot stack hey, cheddar. Hey, uh. I know you're waiting for another episode. Uh, another episode. I know you've been waiting for another episode. I know you've been waiting. Yeah, let it fucking go. I know you got the Yo. Yo. What's good? What's good? Welcome back to another episode of the Lord of Perfected Work. I'm Lord Shoe X. I'm a polymath based in Georgia. Thank you for watching another stream. I'm just popped in my head that I wanted to say, but I can't, I can't, I can't say it. I can't say it, man. So I'm going to just play this music. I'm going to just play this little music I got. <laughs> it might already be playing, yo. <laughs> Good. I'm glad it's already playing. All right. So, well done. we back. We back right now. Before I start the stream and get into the, into the talk. We have our own sneakers. If you ain't know, this is a picture of the sneakers on my t-shirt. Soul Attic is the name of the brand. If you're interested in buying authentic Italian sneakers with designs created by the minds of Mashad Redmond, which is my first cousin, this dude basically raised me. You can go to his website, Soul Addict. Actually, it'll be a live shoes.com slash soul addict. Let's see if I can type that into well the chat. Alive. 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 Matter of fact, bump that. Just get on Instagram and follow Soul Addict. got that out the way if you ain't been to my website shoelovesrebels.com you should go check it out as you can see the slideshow in the bottom right corner of the screen on from my angle so i would assume it might be on the left side of your screen i'm not really sure if you see these pictures and you feeling something just go to shoelovesrebels.com and you can buy everything in here all right follow me on instagram at shoelovesrebels llc Facebook, same thing, Shoe Loves Rebels, LLC. Twitter, Nimbus Haseki. Or you can just send me an email if you want to see what's up with your boy. Lord Shoe X at Shoe Loves Rebels.com. You did. Now, we gonna get into it. Did y'all know that R. Kelly got locked up? Because I ain't know I mean, you know, it's just a little, little thing I found out today. <laughs> I knew I was gonna say it. Bro. I just knew I was gonna say it. But it's cool. I didn't know this. This is news to me, man. They be locking up all the crazy people, though, which is cool, I guess. All right, man. Hold up. I got to make some adjustments. Let me see if I can't turn the music down a little bit. All right. Is it better? Is it better this way? Or should I just kill the music altogether? Or should I turn me up? That's better? All right, cool. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Shoelovesrebels.com. Visit the website. 
one more time just in case you ain't hear me the first time over the music now the music you hearing is unreleased music so sorry if you wanted to buy it or listen to it somewhere outside of here but this is just a little music that i chose for the stream today because you know i'm just experimenting with some things i just want to keep growing my channel and experiment more and more to get things you know a1 so appreciate that thank you so much i didn't even know you was in here honestly thought you was asleep now back to what i was talking about do y'all ever feel like this world be trying all the wrong people but then they just let all these like horrible people just run around rampant I was thinking today earlier, cause I was watching this uh, this guy, this homeless guy on YouTube. Cause I like to watch homeless people on YouTube. I don't know, it's weird. It's, it's my thing. But I be watching homeless people on YouTube and they be talking about, basically they be talking like Jesus. <laughs> they be on YouTube really like, man. All right, so I'm gonna I'm talk from the dude's perspective. Cause basically this cat, went to jail he had like a drug charge but before that he was like a contractor and he had employees and stuff and this was uh this was a um dude that i guess he interviewed like homeless people so he was interviewing him and the dude was just like yeah they they locked me up for a drug charge and i can't even like get an apartment because of my i'm a felon but a pedof a pedophile can get an apartment. All they have to do is, well, I think they automatically have to register as a sex offender if they get locked up for pedophilia. And we all know that pedophilia isn't like super long thing. Like you don't go to jail for like a hundred years for raping kids, which is crazy to me, y'all. And I know this like, this live just got super dark I mean, I'm the Dark Lord, so I, I guess this is nothing new. But, y'all kind of digging this. This might end up being my new magic wand. What y'all think? It's made out of brass. It made me think of that Tyler, the Creator song. But he was talking about his boyfriend on that song, so I don't know. I mean, I don't got nothing against gay people, but... Uh, yeah, this is just a magic wand. I ain't talking about dudes. <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm like, dude. Why they... Uh, why they got this man on here just looking so hurt talking about how he was just like man you know i, I was chasing all these things in life and eventually I, I was like i'm gonna chase my passion and even if i'm just playing guitar in front of the gas station you know i'm i'm living my passion and i'm okay with that and i was like that's pretty cool you know i can dig it you know uh like i was saying all my previous lives man how you know, the, all the chasing and the and the following the dreams to your abomination. <laughs> like, that's cool, man. You know, whatever floats your boat. But I'm pretty sure there's a way around everything. Like, you don't have to just subject yourself to that. But, I mean, kudos to that guy. Because he seemed to be happier. And he had his significant other with him. So, I thought that was cool how he was just like, you know what? I'm out of this, man. I'm... I don't need this. All I need is a bowl of rice. Now, what I mean by that is there's this sage that he closes his eyes and he meditate. And he only say five words from these two dudes who were like trying to figure out if they should quit their job. Because I was watching videos about quitting, quitting jobs just to see what advice people be having. And there's this video I found about this sage. And the sage, these two guys went to this sage and they asked the sage a question like, um, do you think I should quit my job? And the sage sat there and he closed his eyes and he meditated on it. And then when he got done with the meditation, he said five words, only a bowl of rice. And then the dudes was like, all right, thank you sage. And they just went on their way and they walking back to their cribs and shit together. You know, finally one of them broke the silence. This was like, uh, what you think that man was talking about, bro? And then homie was like, well, I mean, you know, we going to work and shit every day, like, 
And the reason we came to this stage was to like get the answer of if we should stay or go. And we go to work to work for food and work for, you know, our well-being. But in the reality, it only take a bowl of rice to survive, only a bowl of rice a day to survive. And I'm stressing out about this. I'm finna quit my job. And the other dude was just quiet. He was like, word. So the guy ends up quitting his job and he ends up becoming a, a famous farmer because he, from his job, he took the skills he had and he ran it up. And he ended up becoming like one of the most known farmers in his city. And the other dude who was quiet was like, I'm gonna stay at my job, but I'm not finna stress this shit because I'm only here to get my bowl of rice and get the fuck out. So, you know, they live in their lives. They ain't ran back into each other until by chance they end up running into each other and they end up asking each other, so what you end up doing? And the one dude was like, oh, I, uh, I quit my job, bro, and I started farming, my nigga. Like, I'm, I was off that shit. I'm not finna stress out over a bowl of rice when I could just do me. And the other dude was like, for real? And he was like, yeah, man. I told them niggas they can kiss my ass. So the other dude was like, well, I ain't quit my job, bro. I just stopped stressing over shit because I'm in this bitch and I ain't, you know, it's a bowl of rice that I'm here for. Why stress, why stress about it? You know what I'm saying? Why worry about it? So they both confused. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> what you mean, dog? What you talking about? So these dumbass niggas go back to the sage. <laughs> then they go ask the sage a question. He was like, uh, sir, what did you mean by what you said? So the sage like, all right, give me a minute. Let me meditate. On it. <laughs> Let me meditate on it, fam. Let me hold up. All right, I think I got the answer. And they're like, oh shit, what are you about to say? And he said five words, only a difference in thought. <laughs> I was like, damn, I don't think this nigga about to say the wisest shit, bro. And he just like, only a difference in thought. <laughs> and they're like, oh shit. So I, any path, everybody's path is, it's gonna be different, but the advice, you take it your way. Everybody's path is different. I thought that shit was fire. I'm like, you know what? A lot more people need to be on on that level of, damn, I shouldn't stress about it. But then I got to thinking about myself and how I be handling situations when it comes to jobs too. Because I'll be like, bro, these niggas can suck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but this, you know, this could be people's well-being, man. This be, sometimes this be people's well-being. So... That's why I be like, don't be talking shit about people's, the way they make their living for real. Cause you know, not everybody was meant to be a boss, you know, have their own business and shit. Some people was made to be a part of, you know, being an employee, but they just as important as the leaders or the bosses. So don't even, don't even trip on that shit. Like that's, that's just, that's just what it is, you know? You can't always be trying to, like, it can't be a hundred cheats, man, because then everybody going to be shooting each other with arrows and shit. Like, bitch, I'm the harder boss, whatever. Fuck you, I'm the harder boss, man. Nah, man. But I just thought I'd tell y'all that little story. I thought that was cool, man, how Buddy, like, just shitted on them after they came back after they did that shit. I was like, damn. Because they just thought this man was just going to have, like, the illest shit to say. I mean, it was ill to me because you don't got to say much, you know? That's that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? But that ain't the topic of this live today. We're gonna talk about this new this uh this not new moon, but this full moon in Capricorn. Which kinda goes perfect with this. <laughs> Capricorn, man, that's like methodical, methodical action. And what's crazy is yesterday, um, when I did the tarot reading for on the live, well the stream or whatever the fuck they call this shit. I had pulled out the two of wands and then I did a reading on myself today and I pulled out the two of wands again. And two of wands is like Mars and Aries. Well, if you're using the Thoth reading system or, um, damn, that, that's only what people know him by 
mostly because of uh, the Greeks is stuff. But ooh, Hermes, the the dude with the wings on his on his uh, sandals, Hermes, yeah, Hermes Trismegistus. That's uh, who the Greeks based Thoth off of, or Tehuti, or Jehuti, what they call him in uh, Netaru, or not Netaru, but Mendu Netar, which is the language of the gods, or what Egyptian hieroglyphics is, the Mendu Netar. I'm gonna write that down in case y'all wanna look it up and learn how to speak it, because I was involved in a group that actually smoked, I mean, spoke, <laughs> spoke Mendu Netar. But they smoke too. <laughs> we smoking big bags of uh, tobacco. <laughs> but I don't encourage anyone to smoke tobacco. <laughs> but yeah. So the full moon in Capricorn. I mean full moon. Full moon's about releasing. Just letting shit go. Just goodbye. What y'all trying to release, man? What y'all want to let go of in these days? Because the full moon energy lasts three days before and three days after. I say three days. Most people say two days. But I like to think of threes because of angelic energy. So, ooh, man. Y'all, if y'all never bought Selenite before, buy it. Because this it's got my hands tingling just holding it. This is some, this is some strong. I got a Selenite pyramid too. And I'm just like touching them. Like, selenite's a good crystal. I always keep crystals around me when I do these lives because it helps me channel this information. Because, be real with you, I ain't have no title. I had to get help with the title. And then, on top of that, I ain't have no kind of, like, subject. I just went in. So, if y'all uh, if y'all interested in hearing what I got to talk about today, Strawberry Moon Forever. I guess that's the name of this moon. I'm not 100% sure. But, the Strawberry Moon strawberries pretty good fruit if you ask me but yeah so it's in the uh, sign of Capricorn now the moon usually deals with the unseen of course like occult wisdom magic shit like that also deals with the emotions and the moon is in Capricorn so you know put two and two together emotion methodical actions doing things with passion Letting go of things that hold you back from fulfillment, emotional fulfillment, and taking charge. But I ain't taking no charge. No, I'm just playing. I was talking to my girl earlier, talking about, she talking about on WhatsApp. I don't trust WhatsApp, y'all. She was like, oh, um, charges. <laughs> and I'm like, I ain't taking no charges. <laughs> I ain't taking no charges, WhatsApp. Y'all ain't about to have me over here looking crazy. But I, I just know she was just talking about some shit. You know, I'll be playing too much. I'm just trying to have fun, man. You know, try, try to keep my spirits high because right now I've been feeling pretty good these past few days. I think it might be this full moon, too. Got me feeling kind of wavy. But I'm definitely going out and howling at the moon, break up some energy, some stagnant energy so I can tap into the trickster energy because I'm letting go of some things, big things, and I'm bringing, bringing in some new energy. So as the moon goes to the new moon i'm gonna be working hard i'm gonna tap into that capricorn energy emotionally to fulfill my emotional sectors by taking mars and aries and i'm running it up y'all i got shit under my sleeves y'all can y'all see it <laughs> you can't see it <laughs> you can't see it you want to know why because i'm the dark lord i'll never show you what i'm doing but I will say this, pretty soon, I will be in a city, doing things in that city, going towards the things that I care about, which I don't know if y'all seen my second stream, I was saying that the only thing I care about mainly in this world is children and women, or women and children, because women got to make children, otherwise, if there's no women, there's no children, but I also care about men too. But the, the main people mostly being kidnapped are women and children. And men are the ones, usually the, the ones that are doing it. So, and I'm not saying that they're like hate or none, because I'm a man, but I'm a man woman. So, you know, kind of, I really can't, I'll just sound cousin A, fuck it. But yeah, they're, they're usually the ones that advocate 
kidnapping children and women out of the neighborhood in those big ass plumber vans. So I don't know. I mean, chicks do be doing it too. Don't don't get it fucked up. You know, it's it's a team, it's a group effort. Even little kids, they be uh, they be teaching little kids how to do this shit, which is fucked off. But whatever. So strawberry moon forever. What what y'all got planned? What y'all got going on for this Capricorn moon? Cause keep it real with you, I got some shit up my sleeve. And I'm probably going to stream tomorrow from the city. So, if y'all uh, if y'all down with the cause, please, please, please watch your boy. See what I got going on because, you know, it's not going to be just me on here just talking. I'm actually going to try and do some things this weekend that I think y'all will enjoy. As long as... Uh, People want to see games because I will be streaming a game. Well, I myself won't be streaming a game, but my guests will be streaming a game this weekend. So, you know, just be on the lookout for that. I'm I'm just going to stream at least seven days. And then after that, I'm going to make a schedule. So in one of these streams, I'll let y'all know what's up. But yeah, I, I do want to talk about a little bit about what I'm doing this weekend. So I get, I'll just, you know, give a little thing, but I'm going to Atlanta tomorrow to um, go to my boy Young HD's show. And if you in the Atlanta area or you in the surrounding Atlanta, the greater Atlanta area, pull up and come see your boy. Cause I'm gonna be there and HD gonna be there and it's gonna be lit. HD is talented, man. He, he's fire. So pull up. Come say hi to me. Come say hi to him. I'm sure he would appreciate it. And tickets only like ten dollars. Well, they weren't even ten dollars. They was like under ten dollars. So, um, pull up. <laughs> Come see your boy. Cause I'm gonna be out there, and I am 420 friendly. So, let's get it. Now, people. Y'all know I love y'all, so y'all know I gotta drop a little bit of knowledge. You know, a little bit of bars. This moon is pretty significant moon, I would say, cause strawberry moon is like, kind of like uh, the spring kind of feeling moon. Like, we done planted strawberries and now we getting our strawberries back. They grown, they they sprout, and we get in our fruit, and we seeing the fruits of our labor. But in the in that, we may not be done with our journey, but we seeing the fruits of what we're doing. You feel me? Right now, I'm seeing. It. I'm seeing the fruits of the hard work I've been putting in the past, since I left Atlanta in 2017. I'm seeing the fruits of all the, like. I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful because, like, I didn't came a long way from that point. Straight up. Like, all I can do is just laugh at how, like, great that I, like, how great I've become from that point. Because I'm not going to lie, back then I was just, I was doing myself a lot of harm and disservice to the people around me. Wasn't really in harmony as much as I should have been. But, it's paying off and I'm I'm so happy that I'm here with y'all to share my experiences and with this <clears throat> with this full moon in Capricorn it, it's bringing me back to a time because I'm going back to the city so might as well talk about one of my experience experiences during this time when I was living there let's see it's June 24th June 24th. Hmm. Now that I think about it, June 24th, during that time period, I was definitely knee deep in recording the album, like heavy. I went back to Atlanta to record uh, Depressing of Foreign, like, it took me three years to record that album. So, every time I was recording, I always start record, recording albums during the summertime. And if you want to hear this album, uh, let me go here. Actually, hold up. Let me see if I can. 
Let me see if I can get on this shit so I can give y'all the straight link. Straight link up. If you're interested in hearing these, this album I'm talking about in this experience, there's the link for you right there. Now, during this time period, I definitely for sure was recording this album. And every summer, I swear, it seemed like when I was living out there, I was in a relationship during that time. And it wasn't like great. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It wasn't the greatest relationship. But it had this, you know, just like any relationship, you have your good moments and your bad moments. But when you a hardworking individual and you don't really pay attention to the shit around you because you focused on your vision and you trying to make sure that you also balancing your work life and your creative life, shit gets shit can get real really fast. So I was in, I want to say May. May is when this started happening because I moved to Atlanta the top of the year. So this is when I first really moved out there. And I had me in like a nice little baby ass apartment and I was living out there. And I had, um, I was recording this album and a, a bunch of like a series of unfortunate events happened. No Lemony Snicket though. Series of unfortunate events. And then during that time, my cousin and kid had moved in with me. And this was June. This was around that time. I was working at Fellini's making pizza and shit. So making this pizza, trying to keep my head straight during that whole time period, it was pretty bad, man. I'm not even gonna lie. I was I had to keep my keep my mind like together because eventually it was just getting too it was getting to be too much for me. And you know, I started thinking crazy. So I was just like, man, I gotta hold it together for my cousin because he looked up to me. So during the whole month of June and July, pretty much from June to the end of the summer, pretty much from June to December, so much shit happened, bro. But June started and I was living with my cousin in this apartment and we was working on the album together. We started working on it together because I had already recorded songs. So I'm just working on these songs, you know, but I wasn't letting shit go. Like I should have. I was sulking in my fucking miseries. Like the album is called Depressed in the Foreign. I was straight sulking in my miseries, man. So the best thing I could do, because I even though I was trying, I, I wasn't I wasn't trying at all. I was trying my hardest to not crack, which was the main thing. I was trying my hardest not to crack. But as far as like doing this album and like not letting the the shit go that was happening happening around me throughout that time period man that shit was tough bro so i just took what i had you know what uh what they my boy um damn what's my homie name bro he came out with an album called if when life gives you lemons you paint that shit gold that's exactly what the fuck i did atmosphere Yo, if you listen to hip hop, listen to Atmosphere. Oh my God, that album. Oh man, that album, bro. So many memories. That's when I had lived in Colorado, y'all. Like I was living in um, Fort Collins, recording my very first projects, like my very first album, Volume One. And I was recording my first uh, uh, project with, my, I, I had like a group called uh, Prolific Martyr back then because we was just like, we dying for the people so many times over and over again just by being the ones to go out here and be the trailblazers and the pioneers and we just constantly dying for the cause always so we just called ourselves prolific martyr and we only came out with one album so but yeah during this time period i basically was trying to get my mind right through that whole shit like working on it working on this album but at the same time, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take this this lemons and I'm gonna make some golden lemonade, like fire ass lemon. I put some turmeric in that shit. I put some lemon juice, fresh organic lemon juice in that shit. I put some uh, agave syrup in that shit. A little bit of cane sugar in that shit. You know what I'm saying? I sauced it up. After I sauced it up, it was a wrap. I pretty much already had had my. Uh, my album down to a science because at that point now I'm like all right this is this is what I want this is what I this is what I'm feeling right now like I don't wanna 
I don't want to change this story because now there's a, a story that I can tell people to get them out of the rut. And I ran with it. That was how I made my lemonade. I'm, I told the story so that people could see like, oh man, it's really not that bad. This dude literally was in the studio recording with his, with the people that was making life like hard, making life hell for me. But I had so much love in my heart and I opened up a portal. So I ain't really have a choice but to ride, you know, roll with the punches. Cause whatever I had opened up, basically the tower fell, then the world opened, which is the portal to me. And I took advantage of that portal. But after I did that shit, I put the album out and I ended up getting a reoccurring role on a TV show. So even though, you know, you might not have let something go, Lord Shoe X, you still ended up coming up in the end because now you're doing acting, which I took drama one and two in high school and I was also in tech club and drama club. So I pretty much like came up like, <laughs> like you know, I took shit that I had learned in my previous, previous days of just being a kid and just did what I could to make myself feel better because I didn't want to be feeling trapped. You know what I'm saying? Trapped in all of that negativity and just feeling like compressed by emotions and shit like that. So, you know, with this moon, this is the perfect opportunity for y'all to go ahead and just drop the past. You can, matter of fact, you can go back to the same places where your past happened, man. You can drop the past and become the person that you truly want to be because that's what life is about you know giving you the chances at all times there's always opportunities always around the corner don't ever think that you can't come out the mud because when i tell you when when i was in that apartment with my cousin and then on top of that there was other things happening when i tell you we was going through the trenches then like i'm from the trenches but when I was telling you we was going through the trenches, y'all, we, boy, I'm talking about dirty ass uh, BDUs, which BDUs is like the uniform that, that they wear, the camouflage. My shit was dirty as hell, boy. Out here thugging. But I ain't never, I ain't never fold, bro. It was time. So many times I wanted to fold, bro. But guess who came to me, man? Shoe. When Shoe came to me, my whole life changed. So... And, and that was just me finding myself. You know, some people equate finding themselves when they found God or, I mean, I found God. So don't ever feel like those situations that come up aren't made for you to like find yourself. You know what I'm saying? Find yourself in those dark moments because that's what I did. And my life has changed for the better since then. You know, I made, I made better choices and I, I took those lessons and I learned from them. Now, only thing I probably have a problem with now, I'd say is fully being open to uh, intimate energies. Just 100% just being trusting and just falling into and surrendering. You know, that's, that's something that I'm working on now by uh, diving into my divine feminine energy which is why I always call myself a man woman. <laughs> Tapping into that energy. I always want to accept that energy in myself because I always tell y'all that I'm macho man, Randy Savage in, at heart, but I want to be more open to people and loving and more caring. So that's why I'm doing these streams to be more open to people and accepting and just letting y'all love on me through the internet because that's, that's okay for me. That's a little bit safer for me. You know, intimacy can be kind of scary, you know, if you ain't really used to being mad intimate with a lot of people. But I've been taking the time the past few years just working on being intimate with individuals. So that's how I'm taking this Capricorn moon and I'm going with it. I'm gonna, I, my, my goal is to run up the check, run up the bag, because that's what Capricorns do. We about methodical energy and getting that bag. And I'm gonna tap into my emotions way even more. But not, like I said yesterday, I'm not gonna tap into my emotions where it's my tunnel fills up full of cars and then eventually my tunnel cracks and I die. I'm just only gonna, I'm gonna let these emotions pass through and I'm gonna observe them. Cause normally I don't even observe my emotions too much. 
I don't mostly acknowledge my emotions. You know, I would like to consider myself a stoic. You know, I follow stoicism. So I'm gonna just type the word of the day today is stoic. No, I don't wanna become famous and I don't wanna buy followers because I don't need followers. I just want to express myself so that whoever's watching, if they feel like this is genuine information or they feel like, man, I can relate with that guy, I love you for that. But I don't need to buy followers and I don't want to become famous because that's stupid. That's why Kanye had to move out of the country with his whole entire family so he, they can't see where he lived. And I don't want to have to do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's my goal. Emotion, methodical action. So, you know, tonight when the moon is bright, go outside, make a little list of things you want to let go of. Go get you a lighter, stand under the moon, or if you got like a fire pit, sit up under the moon by the fire pit and just set those, set that shit on fire, bro, and forget it. Now back to sto the word of the day, stoic. Now I like to consider myself stoic because like I said yesterday, in my in my last stream, we were talking about the, the, the um, Symptoms of desire. So I'm talking about the symptoms of desire yesterday and just how having desires can be so detrimental to your life because to desire things is a life of never ending pain. Now, <laughs> when you're stoic, you don't desire, you simply do what is to be done, what needs to be done. Not want what you want to do but you're simply doing what needs to be done. And you don't involve your emotions in it. You simply take things as they are. Oh, this guy's an asshole. It is what it is. Oh, this, this girl, she ain't trying to, she ain't trying to be my girlfriend. It is what it is. Or whatever, man. You know, these are, like I said, these are terrible scenarios, but I'm just going to use what, most illusions that people tend to get caught up in. Oh, she don't want to invite me. She don't want to be my prom date. I'm about to go murk myself. Like, to me, being stoic is like, well, she don't want to be my prom date. That's cool. I just go to prom alone. And I'm going to dance with every girl at prom. <laughs> but... Stoicism is doing what needs to be done, not taking to heart things that, you know, making, keeping business, business and keeping personal, personal. And to me, being stoic is just everything is business. You know what I'm saying? Everything is business. There's nothing personal because these people are in their own world. And if they're not in your world, listening to your philosophies, following your code of ethics, which 95% of your friends probably don't, then you just definitely got to focus on what you got to get going and what you have to get done amongst your personal world and family members. But business is business. You know what I'm saying? And as far as I'm concerned, yourself is your brand. How you, per how you uh, perceive yourself is how you portray yourself. So if you perceive yourself as the Dark Lord Shoe X, then you're gonna you're gonna look like Lord Shoe X. And for those who don't know who Lord Shoe X is, welcome to Lord of Perfected Work. I'm your host, Lord Shoe X. <laughs> and you're watching Lord of Perfected. No, I'm just playing. But y'all get the gist of it. I don't really try to hold too many emotions on people unless I just truly, truly, genuinely, genuinely care about you to the point where like if if something happened. Like if you died or something and I really care about you, like I, I might cry. Cause I'm just so stoic that I'm accepting of death. I'm accepting of what's right and what's wrong because to me, all these things are just fluid information turned into action. These are thoughts turned into action. So I try not to be held up on those thoughts and those actions. 
because I have my own thoughts and actions and I can't let those others, you know, come into my world and make my world their world. It just, it's not going to work that way. I can't have that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I have people that look up to me that need me to be how I am, stern, put down, making sure that I'm not swayed by the, by the shit. Now, I'm not going to lie here and say that it's things that don't piss me off and upset me because I'm an Aries, man. I get angry really fucking fast. <laughs> Mere seconds. Sometimes I'm angry before I even know I'm angry. You know what I'm saying? But that's what takes me in awareness comes into. I try to break that because I want to be as loving as possible. So I don't want, I don't want y'all to feel like I don't care about these streams because I'm a stoic. You know, business is business. I'm on here streaming because I want y'all to see my brand and understand that I'm being me and I'm doing it confidently and fearlessly. I'm getting on here live. I'm, I'm doing this off the dome. I don't have no script, but I'm being me during this full moon because I'm letting go of the fear. I'm taking chances. I'm taking risks. You know, smart risk, of course, because I always have a backup plan, of course. But, you know, I'm taking risks and I'm being present. Even though I can't see the future, at least I can have something prepared in case something does shift in the future. Because business is business. I'm stoic. I'm staying focused on my purpose. You know what I'm saying? Granted, I can love and I can care. But business is business first. If the business ain't right, how, how can I love and care properly? You know what I'm saying? Because we do live in this world and in order to navigate this this matrix and to be a part of it, you got to do some, some shit. You know what I'm saying? You got to get out here and do some shit. You got to be Mars and Aries. And I'm already Aries. And my Mars is in Pisces, which is crazy. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened, but my actions are based in spirituality. My actions are based in illusions. So I can be elusive to someone who already is in an illusion, believing that that the matrix might be the real world. So when they see me moving and I'm busting moves as a magician, they're like, what the fuck is he doing? This guy don't, he don't do shit traditionally like everybody else. But that's why, because my Mars, which Mars is the planet of action and passion and how you have sex. So as you can see, if, if my Mars is in Pisces, I'm like hella romantic. I, I be fantasizing about the greatest romances. Right now, one of the romances, um, it's a Korean, a Korean, basically they have like these uh, stories that they tell, but they sing them in Korea. I can't really remember the name of it. Let me see if I can find it. See if I can find it. Ah, right, come on, man. There's a temple, man, that they have in Korea. All right, I ain't having no luck finding it, so I'm gonna just tell this story as well. So there's this temple in Korea that's named after this song poem, and. Basically, the song poem is about this girl and this guy who works for the government. Well, his dad's like a, a government official, a public worker. And the girl is like the daughter of like basically like a legal prostitute. But she wasn't really a prostitute. She was just like, a, I don't know if y'all know what geishas are, but they're like women who like serve like higher ups and... You know, they do like, they can sing or they can dance or, you know, yeah, it's like a, like all around, like perfect woman that they created. And these women just are in these um, geisha houses and people would go visit these houses. But that's basically what her mom was, like a geisha type character. So the politician, the politician's son seen the girl and it was love at first sight, right? Now, um, 
his dad like was running like you know the government i guess it would be considered like kind of like a presidential type role and um he goes and leaves because he has to well his father leaves and he goes with his father so the girl still lives where that temple is at or where that temple is based off of it starts with a c man it's on one of my cards on one of my tarot cards i don't even know if i can find it man i'm not gonna get up i'm gonna continue the story so shorty she um well the the girl she goes and like basically shuns the guy she's like no i don't want you no nah. so he goes to her mom and the geisha woman and she's like yeah you can marry my daughter so now like he's talking to her and they basically like all right we we finna get married so they end up getting married before he goes and leaves and he ends up leaving and going with uh going with his father and the girl stays in the city and a new guy ends up taking his father's position in that city and this guy is corrupt as hell like he he over there like calling he knows that because the girl is is known she just super bad so everybody like knows her because she bad as she bad as fuck y'all she's super bad so homie like yeah she's super bad and then he calling her to the temple like yo um let me hit that or I'm finna marry you. So her husband find out about this shit, but he ends up getting a job as like a spy in the government where he end up going with his father. So he support and his job is literally to spy on corrupt officials, y'all. Like this is the perfect love story, bro. So homie goes back to the temple, right? And dresses up as a homeless dude, bro. And he goes to the temple where uh old girl is because this jackass dude who end up locking his woman up he end up locking up dude wife and putting her in jail so she's in prison right yo tell me why this dude goes in here and he just do the dopest shit he's like um well first the girl sees like he tries to first he t he tests old girl loyalty which is some fucking bullshit some manly man shit dumb ass shit if you ask me because that's the part that ruins the story for me like dog first off she ain't even fucked the dude to begin with so why you even do that that's some lame where your game at son come on bro i know she bad but come on bro that shit that i ain't gonna lie that part of the story kind of pissed me off but he tests her loyalty so he tries to fuck her he like yo let me hit that She's like, no, no, I'm married. And then, like, uh, she already was like, nah, I, I'm not going to fuck him either. He's the To the dude, the the politician guy that ended up taking her husband's uh, father's place. So, eventually, dude just like the, the homeless, dressed up homeless guy or her husband finally like, well, you're all under arrest. And dude's like, what, what are you talking about? And then she didn't even know. She was like, huh? So dude take off the disguise. And she's like, oh, shit, it's my husband. And he ended up arresting the, the fake-ass politician guy. He ended up getting locked up. And he ended up taking over his shit. So now he running the city with his wife, you know what I'm saying? And they living it up in, in Korea. And they live happily ever after. The end. Now, you can't tell me that ain't a beautiful ass love story. Besides the part where homie tests old girl loyalty. Because, like, obviously she wasn't fucking... She got locked up, bro, because she didn't fuck the dude. Like, how much more fucking... How much more do you need to see? But besides that, man, I love that story, man. And I just read this yesterday. They actually made a movie about it, which you already know. I'm going to try and see if I can't find it. It's in Korean, though. But, yeah, man, I'm so into romance, dude. Like... Running your girl bath water, put a little flowers in them, like sunflowers, petals, or whatever the fuck. I know girls like bath bombs, you know, throw a little bath bomb in there. Get her some, get her whatever she like, her little drinks or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Give her a little high body oil massages and shit, like, yeah, bruh. 
Making sure, you know, she didn't have a long day, you know what I'm saying? Like, shorty, let me just bang it out of you. Forget all that shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you was at work, I can't, I'm going to work, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm just trying to make you feel good. I know this world's stressful. I know you out here doing your shit. First off, in all honesty, bro, I don't even, unless she working for me, I don't even like my girl to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know about y'all fellas. But I don't even like my girl to be at work, bro. I'm trying to be, as soon as I get home, I don't want her getting home the same time after me and then we both got take showers and then going to sleep. I want her to be ready, like, oh shit. Oh shit, Lord X coming home. Well, let me go ahead and prep the coochie, man, because this nigga finna, he about to make me fucking. But anyways, yeah, I'm just like, I don't see the point, bro. <laughs> I don't see the point why she got to work for it anyways, man. The way I look at it, and I ain't no wrong with women working either, you know. If you a woman and you like to work, do you? You know what I'm saying? It's your world. It's your world. It's your world. It's your world, baby. Do what you want to do. Because pretty much, niggas get jobs to take care of you. Niggas get jobs to chase ass. Niggas get jobs to buy bottles at the club to stunt so they can look bad in front of women. Unless they gay. Which, what's the difference, man? It's... Yo, <laughs> what's the difference, man? But yeah, I, I just don't see the point, bro. I don't see the point in women working. Because to me, I look at it like this. If I'm divine masculine, right? That means I'm in my highest masculine energy, right? But I'm also divine feminine energy, too. I'm a good balancer. But we'll just say that I'm divine masculine energy but just by myself. Because, you know, to be divine masculine is to be divine feminine. You dig? And your girl divine feminine, because to be divine feminine is to be divine masculine. You dig? And both of y'all come together, right? Now, divine masculine, I'm holding it down. I'ma hold it down. Now, if if she if you holding it down, that means she can express her divine feminine with ease. You know what I'm saying? She don't gotta oh, I gotta go to work and come home and then try and express my divine feminine. She can express it all day long while you out here expressing your divine masculine, right? So when y'all come together, bro, she didn't have time to have, keep her energy, keep her womb, womb energy on point all day because she ain't fucking with them dumbass niggas at work. And you got your phallic, phallic energy on 10 because you've been, <laughs> bitch, I've been Mars and Aries. I've been thugging it out, making sure I'm doing all the shit I got necessary to create my kingdom. To create my legacy. Boy. When you get in the bed, dog. Matter of fact, as soon as you walk in the crib, bro. She gonna... Man, man. Pr probably before you walk in the crib. She gonna be in the crib thinking about your ass all day. Like, man. Damn. This nigga. Man. She might even play with herself a little bit. Shit. Just think about your ass. Because you just that nigga. She like, damn. This nigga so motherfucking... Oh, my God, bro. He is, like, perfect. I'm over here painting all these beautiful, inspiring pictures. Because this nigga is just so amazing. Like, it should be like that. And while you at work all day, working hard, like, boy, I'm doing all this hard-ass labor. I'm, I'm organizing all these papers. I'm digging up all this dirt. I got a lot of tension, man. I got to get it out, man. <laughs> I got to get this shit out of me, man. Yeah. Y'all, boy, when y'all finish, bro, y'all gonna be looking at each other like, bro, I don't never wanna go. Nowhere. I don't wanna leave you ever. I don't wanna go nowhere. Like, that's just how I be seeing, like, romance. Like, she don't, even if she working, if she can thug it out and work, cause she might be expressing her divine feminine that way. Boy. But I prefer, my, me personally, I prefer, if she ain't working for me, she might as well be working for it. no one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather her just be at the crib, you know what I'm saying? Just waiting. <laughs> Anticipating. Like, damn. <sighs> Daydreaming all day. Because that's all I be doing. Daydreaming all day about that pussy. That pussy. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. Be at work, eat at lunch. I be on break, but looking crazy. Like, they was like, shoot, what you think about? You don't want to know. 
you don't even, you really don't want to know fucking with me because I'm I'm disgusting. You don't want to know uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches when you split them apart. You don't want to know. <laughs> but yeah, man, what y'all gonna do with that moon energy? It's in Capricorn too, and you know what the card that represents Capricorn is, y'all? In tarot, the devil. I'm gonna just leave. I'm a matter of fact. I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end the stream on that note. <laughs> Again, the tarot card for the Capricorn and tarot. I, I think I said it. The tarot card for Capricorn. Yeah, the tarot card for Capricorn is the devil. And you can go look this up, man. Just finding out what it means. But it don't got to be toxic, man, because Capricorn energy is a really good energy. If you um, if you have, like, uh, your North Node, now I'm just talking astrology. Let me stop. I don't want to go, like, too. I'm trying to keep it simple. Your path in life, if it's in the sign of Capricorn, basically, you're going to be doing a lot of work, but you got to do methodical work, work that makes sense in, in steps. You know what I'm saying? Step A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you and you about the laws and you about uh, code of ethics and shit. So you don't wanna you don't wanna take steps that like I'm I'm an Aries, my uh my sun sign is Aries, so I'm impulsive as fuck. Like it's hella impulsive. I be doing shit sometimes, like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm moving to China. I'm gonna live in China for just two years. I'm out. Niggas be like, quit playing. Then they see me on YouTube. And I'm like, I'm in China, y'all. And there's like a hundred Asian chicks behind me. And I'm just, hey, hey, hey. So don't, don't be surprised if you see me uh, live streaming from the goddamn jungle one day. Okay? Just putting it out there. But yeah, I'm gonna end the stream on that note, bro. <laughs> I, wanna pre I just wanna say I appreciate all of y'all. And I love everybody who watches these streams. I'm so grateful that y'all can come in here and vibe with me. And if you're watching this on YouTube or you watching this on Facebook or anywhere else after it's not live anymore, I appreciate that too. Because just the fact that you rocking with me and you taking time, you supporting my channels. You know what I'm saying? That that's it take a real person to do that, you know, to support the homie. Because you could be watching TV or whatever, but you watching me. So I greatly appreciate that. Much love to everybody in the world. You know what I'm saying? If you're going through something, next time on the stream when I go live, which I go live every day, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except Sunday. Gosh, hell, I might even go live Sunday. Depends. I'm just trying to get seven days straight first. I want to do seven days consecutively. And if I feel right about that, then I keep going. But I want to thank y'all for real, for real. Like, don't ever think I'm just on here taking this shit for granted, spending my time with y'all, and y'all rocking with me like never. I don't never want y'all to think that. Matter of fact, I'm gonna start saying this at the beginning of the stream if I ain't already. But thank you. You're watching Lord of Perfected Work. I'm the host, Lord Shoe X. I'm a polymath based out of Georgia. Thank you so much for watching. Holla. I'm out this piece. Oh, one last thing. If you ain't visited my website, shoelovesrebels.com, which is right next to my face. See it? See my face? Right here? Whichever way. I don't know which way it is, but click on that link. All right? And follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Shoot me an email. Tell me what's up. I want to know. All right, now I'm done. <laughs> Peace, y'all. I'm out, man. <laughs> I'm out, man.